As we know, the way that blood moves inside the circulatory system of the developing fetus is quite different than the way that blood moves inside the circulatory system of the fully functional adult individual. So in this lecture, we're going to discuss, we're going to focus on the way that blood moves inside the heart of that developing fetus. So let's begin inside the inferior vena cava. So we know that along the inferior vena cava, we have the partially oxygenated blood that is moving along and eventually moves into the right atrium of the heart. But before it moves into the right atrium of the heart, the partially oxygenated blood that moves along the inferior vena cava eventually combines with the deoxygenated blood that is moving along the superior vena cava and which is coming from the extremities found on the upper side of that developing fetus. So we have the deoxygenated blood is moving along our superior vena cava. It eventually combines and mixes with the blood that is coming from this, the inferior vena cava. So we have the partially oxygenated blood is moving along the inferior vena cava and eventually it combines and it goes into the right atrium of the heart. Now, once inside the right atrium of the heart, what does the blood do next? Well, normally in the fully functional adult individual, the blood will go into the right ventricle, but what happens in the lungs is it doesn't actually go, or the majority of it doesn't go into the right ventricle. Instead, it passes along the wall of that atria and it goes into this section here, the left atrium of the heart. Now, the reason for that is because because if we examine inside the lungs, inside the alveoli of the lungs, those alveoli are completely filled with the fluid. And so because of that, there will be a high resistance and a high pressure inside the lungs. And because of this high pressure in the lungs and because the lungs are not functional inside that developing fetus, this blood will move into the left atrium and not into the left ventricle. So because on the right side of the heart, we have a higher pressure than on the left side of the heart as a result of the high pressure inside the lungs, the majority of that blood, the partially oxygenated blood, will move from the right atrium, this chamber here, via the foramen ovale and into the left atrium of the heart. Now, what exactly is this foramen ovale? Well, in that developing fetus, the wall that is separating the two atria contains this one-way door, a valve system. And if we push against that valve system, it essentially opens up. And so because of the higher pressure, it pushes against this foramen ovale, the valve, and it basically pops open and the blood flows into the left atrium of the heart. And as a result, what that means is the partially oxygenated blood is able to actually bypass those non-functional non high-pressure lungs. Now, of course, a tiny amount of that blood will still get into the, the right ventricle of the heart. So a portion of that blood does in fact move into the right ventricle of the heart. And actually that's important because when the blood, when that uh, heart of that fetus is developing, we have to be able to develop the wall of those ventricles. And so a tiny portion of the blood goes into the ventricle, meaning this right ventricle can actually now contract. And as it contracts, it develops the wall of the ventricle. So that partially oxygenated blood goes into the left, uh, the right ventricle, the right ventricle contracts, and then it sends that partially oxygenated blood into the pulmonary trunk. So it moves this way, then it moves via this valve system and into the pulmonary trunk. Now, once inside the pulmonary trunk, what happens next? Well, this is the second difference between the fully functional adult heart and this developing fetal heart. So we have another type of shunt known as the ductus arteriosus. And because of the ductus arteriosus and because the pressure inside the pulmonary trunk is higher than the pressure inside this aorta, what happens is to minimize the amount of partially oxygenated blood from going into uh, the lungs, we have the blood going via this duct and into our aorta. So 
the majority of the blood that actually flows into the pulmonary trunk from the right ventricle goes directly into the systemic circulatory system into the aorta bypassing our lungs. Now of course the lungs do need oxygen, they do need a tiny bit of oxygen to actually develop over time so that once that fetus is born those lungs can function effectively and efficiently. So a tiny amount of oxygenated blood does actually pass along our pulmonary arteries and eventually reaches the capillaries of the lungs. So these are the capillaries of the lungs. And so once the oxygen is deposited into our lungs, what happens is that deoxygenated blood returns via these pulmonary veins and it returns into the left vent of the left atrium of the heart. So it travels this way along these pulmonary veins and eventually it connects and it deposits into the left atrium of the heart. And so we see that we have a mixing of the oxygenated blood coming in from the right atrium and the deoxygenated blood that is coming from the lungs and that mixes within the left atrium, then that blood moves moves into the left ventricle of the heart and when the left ventricle of the heart contracts it forces all that blood to move into the systemic circulatory system more specifically into this blood vessel here here known as our aorta and so now we have the mixing of this partially oxygenated blood with this partially oxygenated blood coming in from the pulmonary trunk and then the blood moves into the upper extremities as well as along the following canal and down here into the lower extremities. And so this is the way that our blood actually travels within our developing fetus and we see that it's quite different than the way that blood moves inside the fully functional adult heart.